Hi, so in video 1034, what I did was I took this, which is a microwave oven transformer, and turned it into this, which is a flux generator, or a switch flux generator. If I remove this front plate here, you can see what the actual arrangement is like. You've got these two armatures here, which form the stator, and then we've got this six-pointed rotor sitting right there. Now let me go through a few diagrams to actually help so you can see how this works. So the first one I want you to have a look at is this. Now in this picture, what you can see are the magnet arrangement and the coil arrangements with the rotor off aligned. And of course, nothing happens. If that rotor moves, however, to this position, what we can see is we now have a path for the magnetic flux to move. So that magnetic flux can now follow the arrows going north, south, north, south, of course, as it wants to do. And to do that, it flows through those two coils. Now, of course, what we've got there is a changing magnetic field. So we get a plus and a minus out. Now, it's a generator, so the rota um, rotor continues to rotate to this. Here now we have no flux path and so that magnetic field disappears. And of course the field growing and collapsing is actually what generates. But again in this position, no flux path, no movement of the magnetic field. And then the rotor continues to rotate to this position. And here we can see it in the opposite alignment. But again we have a path from north to south going through those coils. And because they're inductors of course, we have a growing magnetic field and that is what generates until it goes back to the start position, which is this. And again, we lose that magnetic field, so the whole field collapses and we get generation. A diagram of how it actually works. Now, in terms of its construction, you can see that we've got the four poles that we had, the two coils, and here I've got the magnets because basically there aren't enough magnets to fill this entire gap. Now, it would be made slightly better if we put something in between there so that we have a magnetic flux between the north and the south on this set of magnets, but as you can see, it's not strictly necessary, because in Ono 3.4 we had this arrangement, we rotated it, it's still generated. As long as both of these are south and both of these are north, it doesn't really matter whether this is completed or not. If you have a whole lot of magnets that can complete this, then sure, it's going to do a better job. If you put a bar of steel in here, sure, it's going to do a better job, but it isn't strictly necessary. Now, we went through the actual construction phase through 1034, but didn't really show this arrangement. Now, you'll notice that there are four poles here and six poles here. Now, that's necessary to align and misalign in the generator arrangement. A few people have said, can that be turned into a motor? Well, the answer is yes. But for a motor, we can't have more uh, rotor poles than we have stator poles. So here where we've got six, four, won't work. The minimum is four, four. So if this had four poles on it and this had four poles on it, we'd get that to work as a motor in what's called synchronous mode. It would work better if there were only two poles on here and four poles on here. So if there's the same number of poles or less poles on the rotor than they are on the stator, it will work as a motor. If there are more poles on the rotor than there are on the stator, it works as a generator. Now, what I did really was cut up these sections here, this I section and this E section, as I went through in the previous video. But you don't need to do that. I only did that because it uses the steel laminations. I mean, these are silicon steel meant for this kind of magnetic effect, and so they work really well. But any piece of steel is going to do this job. So if you don't have a um, microwave oven transformer, then you can just use bolts. You could actually just make a hex here, put some bolts in there, put bolts here, and it'll work just fine as long as you have this arrangement of magnets and coils. So I thought I'd go through a little more on the difference between the generator and the motor, exactly how it works, and something on the pole arrangements. Let me give you a quick close-up of this so you get a really good close-up look at it. So there we go, there's our six-pointed rotor in here with our four points on the two sides making up the armature. Magnets go there, coils go there. Obviously it doesn't matter if the coils are here and the magnets are here. But that's the arrangement of it in close-up and coupled with the drawings that we've just had a look at, you should be able to reproduce that. So there we go, I hope that's all the information you need. But of course, any questions, feel free to ask. Now, I probably will have a go at making the flux switching motor. I can't directly do that with this particular generator, but I probably will have a go at making one because they basically just fascinate me. 
Now, this is not a new idea, actually. The float switching rotor was, in fact, patented by Tesla, of course, uh, I think 1888, but the patent number is 381968 if you want to have a look at how flux switching motors are made. But like I say, I'll probably have a go on myself. Anyway, I hope this helped and thank you very much for watching.